Hello and welcome to a video tutorial on using Tinkercad. Today we are going to be using Tinkercad to make a keychain. So the first thing that we're going to start off with is clicking on box and clicking on the grid to place our box. All these dimensions are in millimeters. So to start off by entering these values, we're going to click on the square here. In the width, we are going to click the box and type in 69.85. Enter. I'm going to press and hold my wheel button down on my mouse and I'm going to scooch this on over to get to my other dimension, which is this one. This was going to be 31.75. Our third dimension that we're going to do is this one. So we're going to click this white box here. And in this box, we're going to type in 4. So our overall dimensions are going to be 2.5 inches by 1.5 by a quarter of an inch. All in millimeters. So the first thing that we're going to do is mess with some of the stuff inside of this object before we move on to anything else. And the first starts with inside of this shape box here. The only thing that we're going to mess with, because the rest of this we kind of already done, is radius. Changing radius will basically round off the edges to make it a circle or a rounded rectangle. A radius of somewhere around 3 is okay. You can definitely do that if you want to. Other than that, we're going to leave this alone. The next thing that we're going to do is modify this with some text. So we're going to scroll down on our basic shapes until we find text and click it. So here, this is going to be a way too big, so we'll have to resize this. We're going to click to set the text down and probably change the color of the text because the same color is kind of confusing. It doesn't really matter because if you 3D print this, it all prints is using the same color anyway. We only have one 3D printer that has two print heads, and that's, that's about all. So... To reduce this in size, we had a we had a thickness of four. So let's click on this middle square here and change this to three instead. Three, enter. We also should reduce the size of this by dragging this any corner really, and making this a little bit smaller so it actually could fit onto our keychain. If we drag it, uh, yeah, looks like it's going to fit. <clears throat> so, just so that we can see this text for now, we're going to click on where this says shape. That's our text box here. And we're going to replace this text with, like, say, your name. That's my first name. So, it's going to be a little bit too long, so I'm going to resize this a little bit more. And also, if you, if you kind of tilt your view by holding down the right mouse button, you might see that there's a triangle here where you can raise this level up so you can fit this on top of your square, or your rectangle, I should say, and see where this is going to go for placement. For me, that looks about right. So I'm also going to set this into my keychain by holding down this triangle again and just pushing it down into the material only slightly, kind of like that. So it's not going to be poking through the bottom, and it's raised up on the surface just a little bit. So there's two ways that you can, you can approach this. With your 3D printer, you can have it print so that it has a raised surface that has your name, or you can also <clears throat> recess it into the surface so it looks like it's cut out of the material. Either way, it'll look pretty sweet. So since you have this set the way you want it, and you don't want to add other text by dragging this over, you can just simply duplicate this if you want to add your last name. To do that, you'll make sure your text is selected. Go over here and click Copy, and then hit Paste. So now you have another one that you can change. So I'm going to go over here to this one, since this one's selected, and change Michael to my last name. There it is. So, I'm going to move this over here, because I kind of like things to be offset a little bit like that. Let's say you want to put a phone number on here. That way, if you lost your keys or something, some guy can say, like, uh, hey, 
bro. You lost your keys, bro. And you could be like, oh, thanks, bro. So just go ahead and duplicate this layer. And then paste it. Copy, paste. And now you got another one of these beautiful text boxes that you can replace with a phone number. I'm going to make up a phone number. So 330-824-1111. I hope that's not someone's actual phone number. And don't actually try to call it because that would be kind of awkward for somebody. So there you go. We got some 3D text onto your keychain. And they're all the same height. Now, you could leave that the way that it is, or you can take this a step further, and you can actually recess this. And how you would do that <clears throat> is following these steps. You would click the text that you want to recess, and then hit hole, which will turn this into a hole eventually. After you do that, you're going to hold down your shift key and click the red background. Since these two now are linked, if you click this button here, which is from group, this will get chopped out. And now it's going to look like there's a hole there where the numbers used to be. Yay! And you keep repeating that process until all this looks the same. Click on your last name. Click on hole. Hold down shift. Click the red background. And click group. there it is again. <clears throat> so you're just going to repeat this process one final time. Click the text, click hole, hold down shift, click the red background, and then hit group. Until finally all of your shapes and all of your numbers are basically holes in a rectangle that's rounded. Next we are going to move on to making the hanger for the keychain. It's a little loop. Alright, so Making the loop for our keychain is going to be pretty simple. We're going to go over here to rounded roof and click on it. And then we're going to click on our grid to apply that shape. I'm going to hold down my wheel button and scooch it on over. Now this thing has to be flipped twice in order for this to be effective. So this, this uh, surface actually needs to be going this way. So the first thing you're going to do is hold down your left mouse button on here and rotate to 90 degrees. Alternatively, you can click on that box and type in which direction you want to go. I just messed that up, so I'm going to do it again. So I'm going to click this. This time I'm going to do here and type in negative 90 degrees like that. And then you're going to have to rotate this. 90 degrees. So go ahead and hold down your left mouse button on this and rotate it. Whoops, that's not right. Let's try this again. So we're going to click on this, and we're going to rotate it 90 degrees. Just like that. And then holding down your left mouse button, you're going to move this over to the edge of your square, or rectangle. Then, to do the height, the thickness, whatever you want to call it, you're going to click on this white rectangle square thingy. Shapes are hard. Then you're going to click on this uh, box here and type in 4, because that was our thickness. So there you go. All done. No, just kidding. We have to do the inside part and cut it out, kind of similar to what we did over here. So to do this, you're going to have to duplicate this and inset it and cut it out. So we're going to go over here and click copy and hit paste to duplicate this shape. It's too big, obviously, because it's the same size. So we're going to have to reduce this in size by dragging one of these edges and reducing the size down just slightly and setting it back in the center. Now here's the trick. You want to make sure that this edge thickness is not too big that you can't put a key ring on it, and you can't make it too thin that it would break as soon as you tried to do that. Tried it, tried, tried it. That, that's a word. I promise. So 
You can fiddle with this as much as you need to. I think that looks appropriate. Um, so, yeah, whatever. So, once you're done with that, you're going to click on the inside and click hole. These should not be the same color, as you see here. So as soon as this looks like this kind of weird metallic shape, you're going to press and hold shift and select the outside arc. Then you're going to click group. And ta-da! You have a key ring looking shape. So then you're going to click this and attach it to your... That's not right. You're going to attach it to your uh, rectangle. So, yeah, you might have to raise it up a little bit. Kind of like that. And I swear I typed in four, but that looks really thick. So we're going to have to maybe reduce this in size again. How about less than four? Three. Three is less than four, for sure. Let's raise this up a little bit, too, while we're at it. Yeah, we're going to have to go less than four. What's less than four? How about 2.5? Oh, that's three again. 2.5. Enter. Will that work? Oh, I see. Because we rounded it. That's why it's off. No worries. <clears throat> I'm just going to raise this up. That's a little bit too far. Or not. Maybe. But definitely not centered. Definitely going to have to center this. So... How about we just move this on over a little bit, just eyeball it, as long as we can get it in frame here. Yeah, it looks a little bit off-centered, so we're going to move this over just a little bit. And there we go. Looks decent enough for me. So, almost done. The last step that you're going to do here is you're going to join these two things together by grouping them. So you're going to click this or click that, whichever one you want to start with first. Hold down shift and then click the ring portion. And finally click group. And that's it. So this is all one piece now. <clears throat> so the last step to this is going to be uh, exporting this into a format that your slicer program could actually use to generate the g-code so that you can actually print this and for that process this is going to depend on what slicer program you use we use slicer with a three so in order for us to do this first you're going to have to go up here to export and when this comes up we're going to select stl when that happens it's going to download the stl file to your computer and that's going to go to your downloads folder. Then what you're going to have to do is open your slicer program. So for us, we would have to go to start. Um, and this is it here. You might have to type it into your browser or into Windows. Um, it's SLIC3R. But this is the slicer program we have for our 3D printers. It's not that great, I'll tell you that. There's other ones out there that are free and are much better. But this is what we have. <clears throat> so, in order for us to use this, I'm going to zoom in, we're going to have to add the file. So we're going to click Add. And we're doing this right now to generate the G code that you would transfer to an SD card in order to put onto your um, 3D printer. So in our download section, I think my file, what was it called? Powerful GoGo. -Go. What a name. So yeah, it was powerful go go. I'm gonna hit open. And there it is. There is our beautiful keychain. Right now it's going through the process of building all the slices and parameters and layers and infill and all the support material needed to print this. That's what a slicer program does. So really when this thing does its magic, and this bar fills up down here all the way. All you're going to have to do is click Export G-Code. I'm just going to wait one second. Oh, it's done. So once this is finished, you're going to just check it out. Make sure it looks the way that you want it to look. It looks pretty decent to me. So then you're going to go over here and click Export G-Code. Find a place to save it. It's 
in my downloads, so I'm just going to save it as Powerful Go Go, and it saves it as a different it saves it as a different uh, file type, which is a G code file. So all you have to do is go ahead and hit save, and it's saving, exporting to G exporting G code. All G code is, by the way, is just just simply a way that it's a language that uh, allows the extruder to do its job and do all the stuff on an X Y plane, X Y Z, and then it's it's done. So, what you would have to do at this point then is to go to Windows Explorer, go to the place that you downloaded it to. Um, looking for the G code file. I have lots of unorganized stuff. But uh, you'd find the file and just put it onto an SD card, and you're done. That's all you have to do. So hopefully you found this tutorial helpful, um, and you learned something from it. And that's all we got for today. Thanks.